Reading with your kids. Hey, 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 so great to see you. Come on in. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast and iTunes number one kids and family podcast and a nominee for the best kids and family podcast at the iHeartRadio Podcast Awards. We're coming to you from the beautiful Reedville Studios. Where else? Where else would the Reading with Your Kids podcast come from? But beautiful Reedville in Massachusetts. Our guest today will be coming to us from Windsor in Ontario. Her name is Alice Aspinall, and she is the author of a wonderful book called Everyone Can Learn Math. I'm really excited because everyone can learn math, and today we're going to learn how to talk math with our kids. And you know what else I'm excited about is that everybody out there can inspire their kids and turn on their kids' natural curiosity of the world around them. Little Passports is a perfect holiday gift for curious kids of all ages. Little Passports delivers fun-filled packages right to their door every single month with engaging hands-on activities, interactive projects, and unique souvenirs just waiting to be discovered. Little Passports monthly subscriptions are designed to spark children's curiosity about geography, world cultures, or science. From exploring sea creatures in Costa Rica, to building a Big Ben like the one in England, or making an ancient Greek headpiece, every month is a different adventure that will fuel their imaginations and spark their natural curiosity of the world around them. It's the perfect holiday gift for kids ages 3 to 13 this holiday season. Order today for holiday delivery at littlepassports.com slash reading. That's littlepassports.com slash reading. Joining us on the line right now from Windsor in Ontario in Canada. This author has written a book that I could have used many, many years ago when I was in high school. She's a teacher. She's an author. The name of her book is Everyone Can Learn Math. Please welcome to the show, Alice Aspinall. Alice, how are you? I'm great, Jed. How are you? I'm wonderful. Always happy to talk to one of our neighbors up up in the north in Ontario. I love Canada. Uh, it's a it's a beautiful country. Uh, the people are wonderful, and um, and we have so much in common. Do we? Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, it, I'm happy to be here. Yes, yes. So tell me about Everyone Can Learn Math. Well, it's a children's picture book, um, ages 5 to 10. And it's the, the story of a, a little girl in uh, grade 5, or you would say in the U.S., the fifth grade, mm-hmm. I think. Yep. Uh, her name is Amy and she is uh, encountering some difficulties with a math assignment that she has and is sort of thrown in the towel and given up. Her mom is very um, desperate to get her to enjoy math, unlike her mom's experience. And so uh, throughout the book, she goes through some uh, events, like daily events, and starts to make some connections to persevering and working hard and how she uses those skills in everyday things. And maybe she should apply the same concepts to learning math. And she gives it another try and then uh, learns that she can do it after all. Mm. Do you find a lot of kids uh, and and I guess a, a lot of adults have this kind of, of attitude that I, my brain just doesn't work with mathematics and they throw in the towel too early? Yes, absolutely. This is a a common misconception um, that we are born as a math person or not a math person. And so it's this innate ability. Um, But that's not true. There's lots of research now around um, that says that we are able to learn math in the same way that we learn anything else in our lives. We just have to put practice uh, into it, and we we can improve in the same way as a sport or an art or anything else. Is there um, okay? So there's there's no kind of secret or magic formula. It's it's basically just that old tried and true. Pay attention, work at it, practice it, and be open to it, and you'll get it. That's right. Right. Everyone has the ability to improve. And I'm, I'm certainly not saying everyone's going to be uh, an all star, mm-hmm. um, but we all can get better with dedicated practice and um, 
perseverance in that in that subject area. But there's this this um, idea, really popular idea that we are either a math person or not. And that's just not the case. So uh, a lot of especially young children are, are afraid to give it a try and to make mistakes, which is how we learn. We make mistakes and then we learn from them and we get better. Mm -hmm. But you really have to put in that practice first. It, that's you. You bring up a subject that we've talked a lot about in, here on the podcast. Not so much in terms of of math, but just that idea that um, we we don't we, we don't encourage kids enough to kind of be open to fail and to to understand that that failing is just uh, another step towards succeeding or or learning what it is what you're trying to learn. Exactly. Exactly. We need to have. Uh, instill in our children the idea that it's okay to do it wrong the first time. That is part of learning. We, most things we don't know how to do the first time we try them. That's how we learn to do something. Mm -hmm. It starts with walking and then we can say the same thing about learning to drive and uh, we can say it about everything that we learn how to do. And, but for some reason with math, we've decided that we either can or can't. And that's not the case. Yeah. Do you have any idea where that that kind of mindset came from? Uh, you know, I know there there are some people who are like, oh, you're musically inclined or you're athletically inclined, and it, it, there seems to be some validity to that. But do, do you have any idea where this you know idea came that that some people just can't do the math? No, I, I don't know where the idea came from, and and I'm certainly not saying that uh, maybe there is a. Uh, some slight talent for the, mm -hmm. the things you just mentioned and for math. But, but the point is if you practice with anything, you can improve. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so that's, that's the goal too, for self improvement. And, and the same thing can be applied to learning math. There's a whole camp of people now who are really trying to push this growth mindset in math. And it sort of began with, um, Dr. Joe Bowler, a professor at Stanford, and she's really been pushing this movement. Um, so a lot of people are, are starting to buy into this, but it really starts at home mm -hmm. from a young age and, and with parents encouraging their children that they can do this. And, and we really need to stop this negative talk with math. And I hear it all too often where, where parents say, um, you know, it's okay. I was never good at math either. And that, that really is not okay to say to our children. We need to stop that. Excellent, excellent. It, now, one of the things we talk about a lot, obviously, the name of the program is Reading With Your Kids Podcast, and we yes. understand the benefits of reading with our kids. They develop a bigger vocabulary. They learn how to read quicker. They become stronger readers. They learn uh, to have a love of, of reading, um, develop empathy, the bond between parent and child. What kind mm -hmm. of – how can we um, encourage our, our, our listeners – to um, math with their kids? That's a really good question. So we want to encourage parents to talk math with their kids. This is a, um, you can find this online, this talk math with your kid movement. There's a hashtag uh, TMWYK with lots of ideas. Um, you, you really want to get children to, to think and learn that math is everywhere around them. So just like we start reading to our children when they are infants to do all of those things you said with the increased vocabulary and bonding, and there's lots of proof um, that it helps with their um, um, mental capacity. Mm -hmm. The same thing is true for math. So when your children are very, very young, you start counting mm -hmm. and you introduce them to the math in the world around them so they don't view it as this foreign thing mm -hmm. when they get older. There is math everywhere. You go to the grocery store and there's so much math you can talk about. You're driving down the road and, and you look at addresses and numbers on houses and there's so much math there. So it's always about talking about it, bringing it up, asking lots of questions and making it part of everyday conversation. Mm. Fascinating. I, I, you know, I look back and, and when my son was, um, and, and, and my daughter, but I especially remember it with my son because he was so into it. Uh, when we would climb up and down stairs and we just walk in even before he could do it himself when he was in my arms and we would, every time we took a step, we would count and we would do it in yes, the voice of the yes. count on Sesame Street. So it'd be one, two, three, ah, ah, ah. And, 
<laughs> and he That's great. Yes, and he learned to love math. Well, he learned to love math until they he could do math in his head until they made him sit down and write out what he was doing <laughs> to oh, show yes. his work. That made that he was just he threw the towel in that not completely, but it got really frustrating for him. What other kind of ways can we, you you were mentioning there's there's math uh in the supermarket. What, what what kind of ways can we kind of mention to kids and and have them see the math when we're in the supermarket together? Well, the the obvious one is talking about prices, what's mm. higher, what's lower okay. in terms of dollar amounts. So that's a really easy easy one and then you can get into more um like problem solving questions which is where our children struggle with problem solving because they see it as such a, a foreign thing um when it's not so for example if you go to to the meat counter uh the deli counter uh and order um I, one time I was in the grocery store with my daughter and I ordered three packages with two salmon fillets in each um, cause I wanted to portion it out in the freezer like mm-hmm. that. And I asked her, how, how many did I get in total? And she had to think it through, but she, but she got it. And she was only three years, three or so at the time. So mm-hmm. they're very capable of problem solving, um, and doing those word problems, as we call them in a real life context. If we're constantly asking them about them and, and facing them with those problems. Now, I, I had an experience once when, when I was, um, uh, b- before I started doing my educational magic shows and, and I was working with kids with, with disabilities, severe d- developmental disabilities, but I was also doing some, some volunteering in a, um, a daycare for, for kids who had, had experienced some type of, of abuse. And I remember sitting down and, uh, counting with this, this little girl and I would say, um, we had four pennies. And I said, let's see how many pennies we have. And then she would count them, one, two, three, four. And I said, so that means how many pennies do we have? And she said, went back, one, two, three, four. And she couldn't mm-hmm. make that, oh, we have four. And I was told that that's just, there's just like a switch that will be at, at, at one point in, in, in the child's life, maybe three weeks, maybe six months, there'll be a switch and she'll be able to count it up, one, two, three, four. Oh, that means we have four pennies. Um, it was was that were they correct in telling me that that there there are some things that that just take time for kids to kind of uh be able to grasp yes i think so all children develop at different rates and so some might be a little more advanced than others but hopefully the idea is with practice and and some repetition there and um like meaningful practice is what i really should be saying that they will get to that point. They're all going to get there, maybe at different rates, but they'll get there. Mm-hmm. Now, I find it, it, you know, we hear a lot, um, especially here in the States, of um, people talking about it's, it's very, very important that we encourage our girls to get into the STEM field, so science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Did you uh, uh, have your, your central character, it w- was it an intentional choice to make that character a girl? Alice will be back in just a moment to tell us a little bit more about everyone can learn math and how we can talk math with our kids. But I just wanted to take a moment to tell you uh, about how excited I am that Little Passports has been our sponsor this season. I mean, I really love Little Passports. Uh, when when they sent me the um, the, the, the the kit to, to let us know what it was, I mean, I opened it up and I loved it. But what, what I was really excited about is that my wife loved it. She's been a teacher for over 30 years, and she really loved the package. She loved the the, um, the interactive activity book that came with the package. Uh, she loved the fact that it was talking and introducing kids to ancient Egypt. And, and I really love because I'm a really kind of a tactile kind of guy. I love to touch things. I love the fact that it came with this pyramid. It came with a pyramid and, and these little tools that would allow me and kids to kind of cut into that pyramid. It's very, very safe, very safe, but but chip into that pyramid the way an archaeologist would and find an ancient Egyptian artifact. It's really, really cool. And, and we just love it. And, and we want to remind you that Little Passports is a perfect holiday gift for curious kids of all ages. Little Passports delivers fun-filled packages right to their door every month with engaging, hands-on activities, interactive projects, and unique souvenirs just waiting to be discovered. 
Little Passport's monthly subscriptions are designed to spark children's curiosity about geography, world cultures, or science. From exploring sea creatures in Costa Rica to building a big bin like the one in England or making an ancient Greek headpiece, every month is a different adventure that will fuel their imagination and spark their natural curiosity of the world around them. It's the perfect gift for kids ages 3 to 13 this holiday season. Order today for holiday delivery at littlepassports.com slash reading. That's littlepassports.com slash reading. And that slash reading is really important to let the folks at Little Passports know that you heard about them from us here at the Reading With Your Kids podcast. So that's littlepassports.com slash reading. Was it an intentional choice to make that character a girl? Definitely, definitely intentionally done. Um, we want to see females getting into the STEM fields more and more. I certainly encourage, um, I teach high school math, and I am always encouraging our female students to get into those fields. Um, they are very capable, and and for some reason, unfortunately, the, the number of males keeps uh, climbing up in post-secondary for those STEM fields, and, and the females are just not getting into it, and they really should be. And so that was a very intentional choice. So th- this is something that you're experiencing in Canada as, as well as we're experiencing here in the States. Um, what is it? Do, do you see a, a reason for that happening? Um, no, I don't know what the reason is. I think stereotypically our STEM fields have been male dominated mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and, and that trend, um, continues. So it would be nice to, to break that. And I think we're making small strides. I'm seeing it when, you know, it, it helps when they have strong female role models also in the field, right? Like mm-hmm. I, I've been told before, you're, you're a, a female teaching high school math and people are surprised. Um, so we, we want to create the role models, but we only can create them if, if females are going into the, these fields, of course. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Interesting. I, I, you know, what I, I, I have to ask you this just because it's, it's, um, uh, I, I'm just so confused by it. My wife is a teacher here in, in the Boston area and, 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 in in her system and in a lot of systems I see around the country, they've stopped doing, um, uh, calculations the way I was grown up. So if you wanted to add three two digit numbers together, you put them in columns and you just add them up. And, um, and they don't do that anymore. They do this uh, and I can't even explain how they do that. <laughs> you, you might be mm-hmm. familiar with it. But what do you think about, you know, you, you were saying that, you know, we can, uh, every kid can learn math by practicing and, and, and putting the work in. Um, I, are you familiar with these new ways of, of teaching math? Do you have an opinion on those ways? Um, do you think it's helpful or do you, th- you would prefer to teach it kind of the old school way? Um, well, I'm not, I'm not in, um, entirely familiar with the, the new methods that you're talking about. I think you're talking about like a mental math strategy because um, I teach uh, secondary level mm-hmm. and not elementary. So I'm not really familiar with them. Um, I think that the mental math strategies are beneficial because they're they're teaching kids to do uh, bigger calculations in their head without having to write it down. And I think that's the ultimate goal, which is going to benefit them in the long run. If, if you can calculate numbers um, faster in your head, that's always beneficial later on for um ease of higher higher level concepts Mm -hmm. i see i see it with um um, foreign exchange students who come into my classroom and i teach a high level math in high school and and they um always can do these uh extensive calculations in their head that uh that our students can't do and that i was not taught how to do either so i think the goal there with with that new strategy is to improve that mental math, which I think is beneficial in the, in the long run. Now we've talked about how we can introduce our young kids to counting and some problem solving at the supermarket and things like that. I was really, it, it, uh, it, it seems it was maybe 10, 15 years ago. I was just kind of introduced to the concept that like a lot of the sports that we, we love, um, obviously if you're talking about, you know, measurements and things like that, and, and, and if you're talking about baseball, there's balls and strikes and percentages, but yes. like a lot of the things that, um, are happening in, 
in sports are kind of math related when a quarterback drops back to throw and he has to lead the the receiver and and throw the ball in front of the receiver so that the ball and the receiver hit the spot at the same time uh, mm-hmm. that that's a, a calculus calculation that's kind of going on uh, are there any suggestions of ways that we can continue the conversation with our kids as they get older by either using sports or dance or movies or whatever they may encounter Yes, definitely. There, there are lots of higher level math concepts in sports, um, as you mentioned. So there, you can think about functions and, um, with any kind of, uh, ball trajectory that's a, a parabolic, um, shape that's being formed. And, and that's a, a, a common concept in secondary level. So there are lots and lots of topics that relate to higher level math. And when you talk about calculus, you're talking about rates of change. It's um, a common like physics topic also. And all of those things can be applied to um, ball movement or body movements. Also in dance, there are lines that are formed when I'm not, I I can't say the proper terms in dance, but (laughs) you know, they, they form lines and they have to be at certain angles to have that aesthetic view so there's lots of math in in all of those sports, and what a great way to to um, discuss sports and bring the math in with your child, um, you know, on the cu- on the couch watching these things. Yeah, well, I do, and you know, like as we were mentioning before, I think it's really important for our kids to to at the very least not be afraid of math because math really is all around us. Yes, but the, I think that kids are being brought up not being told that math is all around us. Mm-hmm. And that's the problem because it really is. So the more we talk about it from a very young age, the more they realize that it is a part of everyday life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, when, when kids ask me, a lot of times kids will ask me after my magic shows, you know, what, what's important? What do you need to do to, what do you need to learn to be a, a magician? And I'll, Sit down and I'll tell them, well, you need to learn how to do some tricks, but you also need to be a really good reader so you can learn those tricks. And you need to learn how to do math because you have to figure out how much you're going to charge and how much it's going to cost and you have to do traveling and gas and all that kind of stuff. And, yes. um, they're, they're amazed. They're absolutely amazed. Like, what do you mean? You're, I, I want to know how you make a dove disappear. I don't, you know, I go, well, this <laughs> is all, it's all involved. It's all included. Mm-hmm. You always need math. Yeah. Math is very important. Absolutely. Well, you have a wonderful website. Tell us a little bit about um, the website, where we can find it, and also what we, what are we going to find when we get there? So the, the website is everyonecanlearnmath.com. And when you visit, you'll have a, a synopsis of the book there, um, an author bio if you're interested. And then there's also a page that has all of the um, I shouldn't say all of, but the most popular uh, links to buying options for the book. Mm-hmm. So the book is available on all major online bookstores, uh, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, uh, Indigo, if you're in Canada, um, and of course from the, from the publisher as well. So all those links are up there. You can find it on iTunes in ebook format, uh, also on Google Play. And uh, it is available for preview on uh, Google Books, and um, it's featured in Goodreads, so that's your your reading app. So it's it's available on all of the mainstream book markets online. Excellent. Well, the name of the book is Everyone Can Learn Math, and uh, like like you know, like we said earlier on, it's really really important to read with your kids, with reading with your kids of all ages, and it's really important to math with your kids, or as you told told us, yes. talk math with your kids, your kids of all ages. It's really helpful for them. I think it's kind of helpful for parents too, just so parents can relax and not be as intimidated by math. Right, right. Math has become this subject, like the subject that we love to hate. And it's so terrible. We really need to bring back the math love. That's the the message I've been spreading. Bring back the math love. Bring back the math love. I have to ask you, Alice, what's going to come first? Is Are we going to bring back the math love before we bring back the metric system to the United States or... (laughs) 
<laughs> oh, oh boy. I don't know. We're metric in Canada. So I'm not, I'm not sure about that Imperial in the U S but <laughs> we still, we still have, um, we still have a nod to the Imperial though, because when you go to that, the, the uh, hardware store and you buy any kind of lumber, uh, any kind of home improvement stuff, it's all still an Imperial in our stores also. So oh. we still do teach that in our schools. Okay. Well, I love one of the reasons I love going to Canada so much is that I, I get to practice my math when I'm when I'm you know um, uh, trying to calculate what a hundred kilometers per hour is. It's yes. not a hundred miles per hour. <laughs> More good conversations. See, that we can come up with so many examples. Yes, actually, me, my wife and I talked about that the last time we traveled through Canada. Well, well, we've had such a great time. Check out the website, everyonecanlearnmath.com. That's the name of the book, too, Everyone Can Learn Math. And our guest tonight has been Alice Aspinall. Alice, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you for having me. It's been great, and I'm, I'm so happy to spread the message with you. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Kevin Sands. Kevin Sands will be here. We had a wonderful, wonderful chat. I know you're going to enjoy listening to him and getting to know all about him. Hey, we want you to know all about Little Passports. Little Passports is a perfect holiday gift for that curious kid on your list. With a subscription to Little Passports, kids get a fun-filled package each month designed to inspire their curiosity in geography, world cultures, or science. For kids of all ages, order today for holiday delivery at littlepassports.com slash reading, littlepassports.com slash reading. That slash reading, it helps them know that you discovered Little Passports from the Reading With Your Kids podcast. So order today for holiday delivery at littlepassports.com slash reading. We want to thank Alice Aspinall for being here today, helping us learn how we can talk math with our kids. We also want to thank Little Passports for being our sponsor. And of course, we want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. <laughs>